Okay, my final thoughts on EDF jets, and I'm, I'm just going to give you my opinion on them. I've flown quite a few of them so far, and, and um, I'll put them up on the screen. The very first EDF jet that I flew was a Freewing F-86 Sabre jet. It was a 64 millimeter EDF jet. It was terribly underpowered. It was set up for a 3S LiPo. Of course, it's an old jet airframe, so it was never all that stable in the air. Um, it was a really bad choice for a very first EDF jet, but I have always loved the look of the F-86 Sabre jet. The second one <clears throat> that I ever had, and I only know that the first two are in the order in which I first acquired them. The rest of them are not necessarily in order. But the Ishin F-16 Fighting Falcon, it was a 50 millimeter EDF jet. Very easy to launch, very easy to fly. It was a pretty forgiving airframe. Once you got it all trimmed out and tuned, I mean, it, it'll fly like it's on rails. Um, adequate power to do aerobatics with it. Um, I've, I still have it. I've had a lot of fun with it. The F-86 I retired. The F-16 I still have. The third jet is the Ishin F-18 Super Hornet. It's a 50 millimeter EDF jet. It's about the same size as the F-16. The two EDF jets that Ishin came out with. Um, I'm still in the process of tuning that one. I had some uh, electronic issues, radio issues with it to begin with. Had a crash, had to repair it. Um, so I've had one good flight session with it so far. As soon as I have the weather, I'll be taking it back out again. The Aeros Viper Sport Jet, it's a 50 millimeter EDF jet. As far as the stock setups for these um, plug and fly EDF jets, I would say that the Aeros Viper probably has the best performance. It's a pretty lightweight jet for its size. Um, you can do decent aerobatics with it. Very stable, very forgiving. It's a, it's a really nice jet. And it's been one of my favorites so far. The Aeros T33 Shooting Star was a 50 millimeter EDF jet. For a 50 millimeter EDF jet, it's pretty heavy for its size. Um, the specs for the CG were so far off on that, on that jet. Um, I actually crashed it shortly after the maiden launch because it was so tail heavy it's another one of those airframes that i've always been in love with but it's an older airframe you know the t-33 is an old jet so it also was not as stable in the air as the more modern airframes are i also retired that one wasn't happy with it at all i bought a kit the ultra z the zeta ultra z blaze and it's a 64 millimeter edf jet um, and it's a very versatile setup. You can, you can fly it with a single 64 millimeter EDF unit. You can put in twin 50 millimeter EDF units in it, or you can put a traditional pusher motor and prop in it. So you've got three options there for that. And, um, it's an excellent kit. And so far the Zeta Ultra Z Blaze 64 millimeter EDF jet, it's Elevon only. So only two servos are required. A BIME D, a Radio Link BIME D gyro would work in it just fantastic. Mine is just manual mode. I just got a standard receiver in it. I will probably put a BIME D gyro in it just to have that parachute button. But the Ultra Z Blaze, the Zeta Ultra Z Blaze, has been the easiest to launch, easiest to fly, easiest to land EDF jet that I've flown so far. And it's been around for a long time. It's no longer in production, but there are some vendors out there that still have these airframes in stock. If you guys are interested in one, if you don't mind building a kit, I personally prefer to build a kit rather than getting a, um, a factory plug and fly or a bind and fly version because they all, although they have adequate power, they certainly do not have anywhere close to scale power of a modern real military jet so be aware of that um i still have i still have the zeta ultra z astro um in a box ready to build i'm just 
kind of on the fence as to what unit I want to put in that. I don't know if I want to put an EDF unit in it or if I want to put a traditional motor and prop on it. But looking at the performance that I'm getting out of pusher motor and props, I'm really tempted to go that direction with it to have better performance and better flying time. So that brings me to the last one. I also got one of the Esheen F16 50 millimeter EDF jet kits and put it together and I converted that one to a pusher motor and prop. And as far as jets go, factory jets, that is the one that I'm happiest with when it comes to performance. And, um, and it's fast on 4S with a pusher motor and prop. It has unlimited vertical just like a, a real, you know, military, uh, modern military jet. I've watched modern military jets take off from the tarmac, and I've watched them pull completely vertical for a very long distance before they ever leveled out. And with the pusher motor and prop on the F-16 50 millimeter EDF jet kit, I can push vertical for as long as my battery will hold out. So that is awesome performance. That's the kind of performance I would expect from a military jet. All right, so I'm, I'm, I don't want to scare you away from EDF jets. I like to fly everything. EDF jets are a lot of fun, but EDF units are very inefficient. They don't produce a lot of thrust compared to a traditional motor and prop, and because they're inefficient, you don't get a lot of flight time out of them. Now they're they're really cool to fly. It's nice to have you know not have a prop swinging on the outside of the fuselage. Um, they really have a cool sound to them. Some of them sound a lot like a real jet, so it's a lot of fun to fly those around. So I don't want to scare you away from EDF jets, but I just want to make you aware of some things. They don't have none of the jets that I have that I have that have come you know, factory built, like the 50 millimeter EDF jets. They have adequate performance, adequate power for doing some decent sized loops, split S maneuvers, Emelmans, things like that. But if you really want good power from these EDF jets, you really need to run them on 4S LiPo. Now, I don't know how long those 50 millimeter EDF units will hold up. I've converted mine to 4S power by replacing the stock ESC with a larger, more capable ESC that's rated for 4S. Um, I have had to carve uh, foam out from underneath the canopy on most of them to get my 4S LiPo inside the battery compartment because the battery compartments on them are pretty small and pretty tight. I think the Viper and the Zeta Ultra Z Blaze are the two jets that I did not have to carve foam out of the canopies in order to get the canopy on there with the 4S LiPo. So that's something else you need to be aware of. Carbon reinforcement. I don't understand why these manufacturers do not reinforce the fuselage, you know, in front of, from, from where the wing plate is forward, almost up to the nose, because you've got your battery in there. And that, you know, outside of that EDF unit, that's going to be the heaviest thing that you've got in there. In some cases, the battery will be the heaviest thing that you've got in the EDF jet. And it's being supported by that area where there's not a lot of foam. So I would highly recommend that you reinforce that area with carbon. I do that on all of mine. The manufacturer surely know that's the weak point on the fuselage, and yet they still don't reinforce it with carbon, either carbon rod or carbon slat. So be aware of that. If, if you hit something with, with a little bit of force on, with that nose, you're either going to bend the foam and or crack the foam, or you're going to break it all the way through and lose the nose off the front of the fuselage. As I stated, I'm not trying to scare you away from EDF jets. I'm just trying to make you aware of what to expect with an EDF jet. Also, I would not recommend an EDF jet to so, someone who has a beginner skill level. I, it's been about two years since I flew my first EDF jet, and I would say, I would say two years ago, I was probably low level, intermediate skill level. Right now, I would consider myself kind of mid-range, intermediate skill level, flying RC aircraft. So, as long as you, as long as you, feel comfortable enough and you feel that you have intermediate 
skill level and flying RC planes is not to say go for it with an EDF jet. The other thing that I would recommend is that you stay away from the older airframes, whether it's a military jet or a sport jet. And for at least for your first EDF jet, get one that's a more modern airframe, whether it is a military EDF jet or whether it's a sport jet. They're just, you know, they're more aerodynamic. They're going to be more stable and more forgiving in the air, which is what you're going to want when you fly your very first one. You know, stay away from the T-33s and the F-86s and the old MiGs and things like that. Um, That was my experience with both of those jets. The F-86 and the T-33 just didn't have as good performance. They weren't as stable in the air and they weren't as forgiving as the more modern jets. So that's my take on it. Um, I will always have, I love to fly everything. I don't care if it's helicopters, warbirds, bush planes, sport gliders, 3D planes, EDF jets. I'll always have a couple EDF jets in my inventory. But um, I definitely won't have as many as I have right now. I've got, what, six of them? Six of them right now with one in the box waiting to be built. And I'm, I'm kind of hedging on that one, you know, putting a pusher motor and prop on it. But I'll always keep a couple EDF jets around. I, They're a blast. I mean, you know, I, I love flying them. I just wish they had more performance and more flying time. But I did find that after converting them over to a 4S LiPo, I did get not only better performance, but I also got, got better flight time out of them. But anyway, that's, that is my opinion on EDF jets after flying quite a few of them over the past two years. Like I said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't shy away from them. But uh, just be aware of what you're going to need to do to them. And if you want really good performance, you definitely got to go at least 4S on those, on those airframes. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the air.